Death Row with Death Row Closed Caption, and I'm back again with another review. And this week, I've decided to do something special for the Black Friday sales events that are going on everywhere. I'm going to review the Black Friday movie made in 2021, a horror comedy starring Devin Sawa, Ivan Baccaro, um, sorry if I said that name wrong, Ivana, it's by Ivana, not Ivan. Uh, Ryan Lee, Steven, Stephen Peck, Michael Jai White, Bruce Campbell, of course, and Bruce Campbell is also the producer, a one of the producers of this movie as well, and he acts in it, of course, and it's directed by a Casey Tebow, or Tebow, whatever you want, but the movie's called Black Friday 2021. And I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. So before I get started on the review, please like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell so you can see more reviews that I do. Hop on over to Death Row TV if you want to watch some of the movies that I post out there as well. I got about 17,000 subscribers over there now. Pretty awesome. But uh, let's get Death Row closed caption built up, shall we? Here we go with a review of Black Friday 2021. And the movie starts off, it shows you a little clip, it, snippets of uh, what's going on. There's like these little parasitic creatures that are roaming around in these stores. One of them being the All Mart. You know, something similar to Walmart. Uh, and that's what takes place at the very beginning of the movie. These, these workers are pretty much being uh, taken over by these parasites. And they're making like this cocoon looking thing in the middle of the store or whatever. Anyway, this is the All Mart where you get your DVs. And it shows what's going on in that. But we're not going to be at the All Mart in this movie. We're going to be at something called We Love Toys. Now, this is Ken, Devin Sawa's character, dropping off his kid at his ex wife's house and her new husband. Because he's got to work that night on Black Friday. Uh, you know what I mean. Um, and so he drops her off to go work at the We Love Toy Store. Now, the only thing I can say about this is kind of dated. I don't know. But before I get start, before I say that, he goes next to pick up Chris, which is like his friend that works that he works with, a bunch younger or whatever. But what thing I was going to say about this movie is this, is I don't think there's any more big toy stores like this anymore. I, it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Toys R Us is gone. So in, in that respect, this movie's kind of dated. I kind of wish there was toy stores like this again, because I loved them when I was a kid. Anyway. As you can see, these people are lined up outside the toy store called We Love Toys to get in. And of course, you know, they're, you know, doing their thing, getting ready for these people to come in. Old dude takes the smoke break out the back and gets himself locked out. And one of the parasitic creatures gets him on the outside. So he's the first one to go in the toy shop called We Love Toys. And, of course, they have this defective bear that says all kind of weird language and crap. Or foul language or whatever. And you got this character named Brian here who plays a pivotal role in this movie, I will tell you. Because he, he was, you know, he's kind of an asshole at first and he becomes an even bigger asshole later. So, <laughs> so he, he doesn't change all that much. Anyway. So, uh... You know, then you got Ken again. He's the main character by Devin Sawa. He's got stuck with the new guy. And he's trying to tell him how to do things so he doesn't get caught and bogged down by the customers that want too much information and want you to hold their hand everywhere they go in the store. He's like, hey, just point any general direction. They'll eventually find what they're looking for. <laughs> Don't really try to help them, which is what he's trying to explain to them here. And, of course, all these customers are going crazy trying to find stuff. And you're looking around the room, and these customers kind of look uh, a little sick or whatever, like they got some type of uh, disease. And of course, this grandma character right here is giving Chris a hard time. And so Brian tells Chris to go go to the back 
you know, there, there's some vomit on in the aisle on the floor that you need to go clean up or whatever. And so the old lady gets all pissed off. She goes and sits in Santa Claus's chair or whatever, which ends up having like uh, this cocoon looking thing underneath it, which is the parasite cocoon. Anyway, he's he's over, he gets over there with the yeah. Here's the lady, the old grandma sitting on that uh, Santa Claus's chair, and that little cocoon thing's right up underneath her. Now I have to say the practical effects in those things are damn cool, and I liked that. There is a balance that you could pull off with CGI and practical effects, and I think this movie does that pretty damn good. Uh, so can be done I mean you don't have to go all practical effects you don't have to go all CGI I think a mix of the two in a perfect balance you almost can't tell which one's the other problem is with most of these movies these days it's all CGI or nothing and you can tell it's CGI I mean come on so Chris they tie down Chris in the back because he like hits this lady over the head with a bag because she's trying to attack her right here so they take <laughs> they take Chris and they strap him to a chair in the back because they think he, he's gone nuts or whatever he's like no you need to untie me the customers are going crazy out there something's happening or whatever and he's like trying to explain he's like could you please untie me because I'm not I don't want to die and then so yeah Ken and the new guy are trying to make it back there and then like they get attacked by another woman and she spits like this spider web thing at the new guy's face and gets into his mouth or whatever and it's basically the par <laughs> the parasites just spreading pretty much and getting going from one person to the next and creating more mutants and they're not like zombies of any sort they're more like mutants you would see from like resident evil type mutants which is i mean they look pretty close to what you would see in a Resident Evil movie. Some of the, the creature effects are pretty damn good. And of course we have Bruce Campbell. You can't, you can't have a horror comedy. Well you can, I'm just saying. It's, it, it, it amps it up ten times more when you got Bruce Campbell in your movie. Let's just put it that way. And he just plays the calm store manager type person that uh, he's like hey man we got to make some money or whatever tonight we can't be you know dilly dallying around right here and he doesn't believe anything's going wrong he just wants to get more people back in anyway they still have Chris strapped to his chair back there and of course Anita being the perfect uh, whatever she is uh, what do you call it perfect uh, employee she gets hit in the mouth by the new guy with the parasite stuff. Because he just, he, he's embedded with the parasite stuff. And so, and of course, you got Brian over here thinking he knows what's got to be done. I'm going to call the police. And of course, the he starts freaking out when all he can get is an answer machine at the police station. He's like, the, the police station doesn't have an answer machine, does it? <laughs> so he's freaking out. Then you got... Uh, uh, Michael J. White's character Archie, he he comes off as like a, you know he's pretty badass about how he's handling. It. He's pretty calm, kind of like uh, Bruce Campbell's character is. But they don't give they don't really go into detail about his character, which I kind of wish they did, and I kind of wish they let him like do some sick ass moves and kick some of these parasites in the head and shit you know, I don't know why they didn't that would have been a whole scene by itself like a whole action scene would have been awesome with him but nope we don't get that we don't get that instead we get a, a lot of this you know hey we're gonna we're in this together we need to figure out how to get the exit door closed and then get to the back and just uh, uh, basically hole up until all this blows over or whatever and of course you got this older character named Ruth whatever she's just saying all kinds of weird shit the whole time because she's old <laughs> it's and so they're they're making their way through the store after they close the uh, ex, the exit door in the back to keep the customers from coming more customers from coming in 
because any of these customers that are infected with this parasite and is mutating, they, they go towards the center of the room where that cocoon was underneath that chair, and they're being absorbed into this and making, uh, and that cocoon just keeps getting bigger. And this is Archie just trying to make his way back. It's almost there. And the, the longer the longer the, uh, one of these uh, customers is, uh, I keep calling them customers, but one of these people, <laughs> one of these people uh, stays infected with a parasite before they're absorbed. The bigger the creature, the stronger the creature it becomes mutated into. So yeah, I mean, kind of funny, but at the same time. It's good. It's a good horror comedy. I mean, I have to admit, uh, I enjoyed uh, every bit of this. And because this is what the character uh, Archie, they're trying to make his back. And then, yeah, this right here, this bad mama jama right here, is huge. Like he's mutated. This this thing has mutated a lot. And it's got really big, and it takes Archie out before they could get back to the back. I don't want to show that part because I didn't like Archie going like that. And so they're all like in the back just, you know, carrying on about different stories about working there and that kind of stuff, trying to bond or whatever. And end up getting in a fight in the end and, it, it, you know, whatever. But like it all, it, we're all screwed. And then, uh, you know, Bruce Campbell's character is like, yeah, I've been here 27 years, and, you know, I know the store like the back of my, you know, hand and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, what's it all for? I mean, I could have done something else with my life and all this other stuff. And that's when they get into the argument about them. Like, Ken and Chris get into an argument because they seem to be both wasting their life away, Ken more so than Chris, and Chris is, like, trying to explain to them, like, yeah, this I'm, this really is my, you know, I've only been here two years. You've been here how long? Ten? And you're still doing the same stuff. But anyway, so they arguing about that kind of stuff, and that's when one of the, I think one of the, oh, yeah, and see who, that little cocoon thing is getting bigger and bigger. And then he finally says, like, look, we got to somehow get out of here. And he's like, I got a cabin in the woods. And uh, they're making a little callback to uh, Evil Dead right there. That's pretty funny. Uh, and then old new guy pops up again. And he's all messed up in the face and stuff and mutation and all that stuff. Doesn't get him, but then he gets uh, he gets Devin or Ken or whatever, and then they they tussle and everything, and then right here is where Ken's like, you know, back up. I've been bitten by him and stuff, and he's like, I'm going to end up turning into one. Come to find out later in the movie, you you find out later in the movie that Brian during the whole tussle, Brian had actually bitten. Ken just because Brian was mad at him and so Brian made Ken think that he was uh, bitten by the parasite and so Ken stays behind to try to set up some distract him while they get onto the truck and get out of there but the problem is when they get into the truck and old Chris crawls around to the other side to, and to, to drive the truck he cannot get it to work <laughs> and so he gets back into the truck with the packages and the other guys while there's you know those parasite creatures are right outside the truck and they don't go anywhere so they have to open the bay doors back up again and go back into the store and of course this big ugly creature right here is stalking uh, Ken throughout the store and come to find out this was the grandma from earlier this is the she this is her mutated and so Ken, Ken's trying to lead her around the store and distract her the whole time because she's the biggest one and like the strongest one and like I said they got to come back in the store because <laughs> he can't drive the truck and uh so they all decide, okay, we gotta go. We get gotta get to high ground, and that's when they all 
they can't see anything because there's a bunch of stuff on fire and there's smoke and everything. And, and uh, Bruce Campbell's character, uh, I, I just gonna call him Bruce. His name, the character's name is Jonathan, but whatever. It's Bruce. It's Bruce being Bruce. Anyway, so he's like, "Hey, just grab, just grab my shoulder, and I'll lead the way. I know the, you know, I know this place like the back of my hand. I, I know every inch I can get through with my eyes closed, whatever. So that's what they do." And they finally end up on the roof or whatever. And they're trying to figure out how to escape from the roof down. Get you know, get outside the store or whatever. And then those creatures are, are coming in. They're trying to Yeah, that's when she Yeah, that creature right there is the grandma right there. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, the, the creature effects in this thing are awesome. I, I, I like it. Uh, like I said, it, it, I mean, and the thing makes such a weird noise. It, it's it, it's actually kind of really creepy. I mean, but yeah, pretty awesome there. And then, uh, yeah, that thing, the, the whole big cocoon thing has absorbed enough of those parasite you know, human parasite creatures and everything that that's starting to get so big it's coming out the ceiling or whatever. And then, uh, let's see, hold on, let's go back just a little bit. But yeah, at the, at some point, King gets a finally gets a text back from his ex-wife saying, "Ken, we're safe. The girls are fine." Uh, they're up at a safe zone. I said I can't see the rest of it because it's all you know cracked and stuff. But he pretty much gets the gist of it. They're in a safe zone somewhere, so it gives him the because he figures out that uh, Brian did bite him and he wasn't really bitten by one of the parasites. So he sees that text and that gives him the wherewithal to try to get the hell out of there. And of course, that little thing drags him to the cocoon, but the cocoon doesn't absorb him because he wasn't bitten. So, <laughs> anyway, there's, hold, I want to try to get to this part, right? Huh. So they're up on the roof, right? And old Bruce, uh, Bruce is uh, pondering things right now, and he's. He's, he, and they're trying to he sees the cocoon coming up out of the windows now it's getting bigger so big that it's coming through the roof or whatever and they see that some of the other uh, mutated creatures are trying to come through the, the hatch in the roof and so Bruce is standing on it right here he's standing on it like he would be standing on the door to that cellar in the uh, cabin from Evil Dead which I thought was kind of funny a little bit of a callback there and then he finally he, he just like screw it I'm, if I'm going to go out I'm going to go out fighting and he opens up the hatch door and jumps down in there with the creatures or whatever trying to fight them or mess with them or whatever and that's the last you see of his character so I don't know exactly exactly what happens they just they just leave that one hanging you don't know what, what at all happened to Bruce Campbell's character where he just jumps on down in there you see they're grabbing at his feet right here and he's like oh shit he just jumped down in there yep so now yeah he's trying to get away back to him and this is where Brian pretty much admits that he bit uh, Ken to make it look like he was bit by the zombie, or not zombie, by the uh, mutant, parasite mutant, whatever. And so they jump off, they jump off the building into the dumpster that was nearby, and uh, that's how they get off the roof finally. And the uh, you know, she doesn't help Brian out of the dumpster because he was such a, he was such an asshole about doing that to Ken and all that stuff. So she just kind of leaves him there. But Brian, then all of a sudden, this 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 creature comes up out of the cocoon of the top of the We Love Toys store, and it's like this weird agglomeration agglomeration. I can't even say that word of. Of all the uh, mutated customers <laughs> that were in the building, are all uh, 
they just melded together into this huge, you know, polymorph character or whatever. And, uh, and Brian, Brian's, uh, logic for some reason is to talk it to it like it's a customer and we can figure something out. <laughs> so he starts talking to the big ginormous creature like it's a customer and they can, uh, fix this with a trip to the uh, HR or something, you know? Anyway, this giant armor thing is peeking up out of the building or whatever. And like uh, like I said, Brian tries to go talk to it and it doesn't quite work out. Let's see if I can get that in here real quick. Oh yeah, there's a good that's a good uh, shot right there. Pretty cool looking. Kind of reminds me of the character from uh, Basket Case mixed with the uh, grandma character from uh, uh, Dead Alive where at the very end it comes this ginormous beast. Kind of a mix of the two. Kind of cool looking. Let's see if this is the part right here. So, I mean, you can tell this is kind of CGI, but then. So, let's see if I can. There we go. So, he's trying to talk to it, talking, like, hey, we can work something out. Like, you know, you're a customer, and I I, I talk to customers every day, and we, we can. Uh, I know you're scared. I know I'm scared, you know. And then, like, yeah, that ain't going to work. And then, uh, yeah, they're. They're kind of like looking at him like, what the hell is he doing? Do you really think that's going to work? And then the creature kind of like is listening. But then. Hold on. Creature's listening, listening, listening. Let's see if I can get it right. Never get these things right for something. Let's see if we'll do it from right here. And here we go. Bloop. <laughs> Brian's dead now. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think talking to it like a customer was going to work. That's pretty funny, though. I have to admit. Anyway, so yeah, they finally, uh, Ken makes it out there. And they and they they're trying they're trying to like get the uh, creature's attention, and then Chris grabs onto a uh, forklift and is trying to get the try to get the creature to take the forklift on pretty much, and the creature ends up like uh, yeah, grabbing the forklift with that little parasite thing and eating it, not knowing it's you know probably not going to be good for it and it weighs it down just enough to go back down in the fire or whatever and they they, they think they pretty much won this battle but then <clears throat> they get in the car to leave and if you look in the background as they're leaving because remember the movie starts off with it, they were inside Walmart or whatever and so that means these things are in other stores. And as they're leaving, say right about here, oops, you should see it. Yeah, as they're leaving, you see the creatures are in other stores as well. There's one right there. Crazy. And that's the end of this movie. All the credits and everything else. Nothing at the end. I would have loved to have seen this movie in theaters, but I don't remember ever seeing it being advertised for theaters. So yeah, I mean this. I give this a, I give this movie a solid three three stars. I mean this. Look, it's a horror comedy. It's slapstick. It's it's. 
but like I said, the use the use of CGI where it was needed and the use of practical effects were awesome. So I like I like it when the movies use a blend of both, like this one does, because it 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 makes it that much more special in my opinion. So yes, I'll give this I'll give it a three and a half stars for using practical effects along with the CGI and not just going all CGI. So three and a half for me. Or I guess you'll check out my credit list score and it'll give you a percentage of where that three and a half sits for me exactly. And that is the end of this review. And uh, Black Friday 2021, go check it out. It's pretty cool, funny movie for Black Friday. I'll catch you out on the edge of another review. That's Death Row out.